Welcome into the Situation Room. I'm Angus Hout. Uh, I'm going to be. I'm joined by Ray today. So welcome in, Ray. Yeah. Before we get to you, we got to shout out our good friends at uh, Betway. Uh, so be sure to check out Betway to check out the latest Jets game day odds and bet on the NHL. So thank you to Betway. Uh, make sure you check out yeah. JetsNation.ca. Uh, shout, uh, check out all of our social medias and. Uh, yeah, make sure you like and subscribe. That uh, goes a long way for us. And uh, make sure you check out uh, the Jets Nation radio page on YouTube as well. We appreciate all the support. Ray, how's it going? It's going great. Yeah, how's your uh, how's your Thursday afternoon going? Uh, it's kind of getting a lot more stressful with uh, the time dwindling down on what the Jets are able to do. But I'm eager to see what Chevy is able to pull out. Yeah, we've got, well, it's 2.31 local time for me so we got what uh 23 and a half hours to go yeah oh and it's frustrating because everyone else has done a thousand things and you're kind of looking at the cupboards of what can the jets do at this point yeah it's really interesting to see like how the jets are just kind of waiting this one out and just kind of they're not really fully committing on anything but it's like you're you kind of like it's a good thing and it's a bad thing at the same time where it's like you you kind of admire his patience on getting the right deal, but when you see deals like Chitrin just yesterday going for a first and two second round picks, you're like, why couldn't Chevy pay that? Right, and it's like, oh, that one was frustrating to see too because the Jets really didn't need to retain much, any money on that, maybe a little bit of money if they were to ask, but yeah, frustrating to see a first, second, and third. Like Arizona got robbed on that one. Yeah, I think uh, the main reason why Arizona got really robbed on that is because they didn't really want to retain salary or take on a contract back for him. So it really limited the amount of games that could go after him. And then kind of just, they almost just kind of limited the return by themselves just for putting those limitations on themselves. I mean, it's great that Arizona's bad for us here in the Central, but man, this is a bad look for the NHL. Like, I can't believe how much money they're not paying their guys because i think yeah. uh, john scott had said something like they're making it's only 48 million dollars in actual dollars that they're spending it's like yeah. yeah maybe expand the uh the cap salary and just get rid of arizona because this this isn't working anymore yeah arizona is just a team where it's like you you see them and you kind of want them to kind of get better and see like hey this is why they're in arizona you want them to improve you want them to show kind of success but every year it seems that they're just kind of like they're in a like forever rebuild where when they do develop their assets, they're mostly trading them for more futures that aren't even guaranteed. So just seeing them kind of be not it's not successful, just just kind of like in an endless loop of just rebuilding. It's just not what the NHL should be kind of supporting there. Yeah, I totally agree. It's frustrating to see as a hockey fan. So hopefully for the like 18 fans in Arizona, the team gets better sooner rather than later. But for now, we'll accept that the Arizona Coyotes are bad and it's just generally free points for the Jets. Um, yeah. So, like, we are less than 24 hours away from the trade deadline. What What's on the radar? What do you think the Jets could do between now and uh, 2 o'clock Central Time tomorrow? I think the Jets really have to come up with some magic here. Like they like a lot of the top options are kind of falling off the table. And with Chevy, I feel like the moves that he wants to make is very like limited. Like he doesn't have a lot of options. But every time he comes up with something that's like out of like out of pocket, just completely not on the radar of anyone. And that's why I really like Elias Lindholm from Calgary even though it might be a tad unrealistic with uh, how we're in a direct competition with Calgary, but with Calgary in the position, there are five points behind. I feel like they're in a situation where they really have to decide between buying and selling. And I feel like if they go on the sell side, there's a lot of assets on Calgary from defense to the forwards that all fit the bill for the Jets. Does Mackenzie Weger also hit that framework of guys that the Jets should look at? Yeah, I feel like Uyghur is an interesting case where he, like, if you trade for him, you have him for nine years, including this year. So you really, like, you get him locked up for term, which is really important for the Jets. But at the same time, the year six through eight of that deal might be kind of 
something that might not look as pretty as now, but I feel like with the position the Jets are in, they really need to find that partner for for Morrissey there where he can have someone that's kind of better than DeMello, but like also kind of sit like basically a better DeMello on his right side. So, and then you just have DeMello and Brandon Dillon playing together and you kind of got a sweet top four right there. Yeah, definitely. Ooh. Yeah, I'd be down for some Calgary trades. And I'm looking at other direct competition, uh, Chicago Blackhawks, uh, Max Domi, uh, allegedly just for a second. Yeah, I feel like Domi is like the perfect guy you want to go for, for that third line center role to bump Lowry down. Because as we've seen with Lowry, he's been goalless for many games and just hasn't been the Lowry that we know and can't he can be. So I feel like being able to bring in Domi for a cheap asset and it could even be a pick in the future years. It doesn't have to be next year's. I feel like Domi is a guy that can bring a lot of depth scoring to your team and it's not going to cost you as much as what other assets have gone for. Well, like the Jets don't have a a second round pick this year or next year. So it's like because of that Toronto trade uh, that they made earlier in the week, do you think like they would take a 2025 second rounder? Yeah, I feel like Chicago is definitely in a position where they don't really care about the year that they're getting their asset, where as other teams might want like assets now that they can develop and go into and use so they can emerge from whatever retool or rebuild they're in. But I feel like Chicago is going for a more long form kind of retool rebuild in their in their system with multiple firsts for the next three years. So getting a 2025 or 2026 second round pick if they like versus getting like a 2023 third round pick I feel like they would rather go for the higher pick if they have to wait for it yeah and I mean it, I think it's great long-term planning for their, the Chicago Blackhawks so they're going to be abysmal for the next two years and you look after that and you know you might be in a spot to get Bedard to glory if you can trade two or three second round picks that you acquired five years earlier so yeah good on them yeah, and even with that, like when you're acquiring picks that far into the future, teams are like teams can drastically change in that time from now until like three years from now. So a second round pick, like the second round pick that they got from Toronto in the Sam Lafferty deal, that second round pick, if they lose Matthews or like the team just changes identity, that pick could be a higher pick than if they got a second round pick for this year as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. I mean, even looking to the Jets by 2025-26, the Jets might be in a bit of a scary uh, yeah, predicament. Definitely. All right. Um, and scary predicaments. Uh, Logan Stanley, another young guy that wants out of Winnipeg. Uh, it makes sense in a lot of senses because, I mean, he's played, what, 13 games this year, one assist. So it's, you know, he hasn't had a lot of time on ice. And, you know, anytime we post anything about Logan Stanley, the comment section (laughs) is full. Yeah. I feel like Stanley is a really polarizing player. I feel like you either love him because of what he can bring or what he will be able to bring into the future, or you're absolutely just kind of dogging on him for kind of the plays that he makes right now. And I feel like he just hasn't got, he just kind of got passed in the depth chart. Like no one really saw Sandberg kind of, like everyone kind of saw Sandberg and Stanley being kind of like, like not like a six, seven, but like kind of like splitting between them. But I feel like Sandberg really emerged to where they just had to start Sandberg over Stanley, even though Stanley was healthy. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's good for Dylan Sandberg, but yeah, it's Logan Stanley has taken a hundred and some odd games to develop and, you know, on an in in an irregular basis, irregular basis, he's not doing nearly enough to stay in the lineup, and it's unfortunate for him. And you kind of feel for the guy, but is this one going to bite the Jets in the ass, or do you think that this one might be kind of a blessing in disguise for the Jets? Yeah, I feel like it's really going to be kind of a mixture of that. I don't think it's going to be like perfectly like because you don't know exactly what Stanley's going to be in like two or three years. Like he could really emerge with how kind of big he is and kind of like a late bloomer. But I feel like they're not really forced to move Stanley right now because he's still on an RFA and still has arbitration rights and stuff like that. So they don't really have to like move him. And a good comparable to this is kind of what Tanner Janot got from Tampa. 
I'm not saying that Stanley is as good as player of what Tanner Janot is based on how good Janot was last year, but I feel like the Jets aren't really going to trade Stanley unless they get the return they want or they feel like it makes their team better now. So I feel like you either trade him in the offseason for kind of like a lot of assets or you can trade him in a deal this year to like lower the amount of picks that you need to give up. So, for example, you could trade Logan Stanley to Chicago in a Max Domi deal and then not give up a second round pick, but maybe give up like a fourth round pick as well. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, it, it would be a unfortunate thing to have Logan Stanley in the same division and he ends yeah. up being the guy that, you, you know, everyone's potential it could ceiling. I, I guess the ceiling of what his yeah. potential could be if he ends up being that good. But I mean, defensemen take about 300 games to really get going in the NHL. Yeah. Yeah. And I think with Stanley, like, you can't really, like, if you have Stanley in your system, then you have Hainola just in the AHL. So I feel like you have to really trade one of them. If, like, you could trade both of them, but you most likely have to trade at least one of those defensemen. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Stanley just makes the most sense based on age and kind of where he's been this year, where Hainola has seen success in the AHL. So, I just feel like Stanley's just kind of caught in a bad situation where it's not really any fault to Stanley, but it's just kind of like getting past and just not being able to get the opportunity that he feels like he deserves. Well, that and just not getting the time in the AHL thanks to the pandemic, mm-hmm. like just that screwed those three young, well, at least Hanela and Stanley, it really screwed them over for their development. So, you know, you got to do what you got to do to get by. And we all suffered through the pandemic, but man, those two are, you know, some of the worst hit for the NHL because they should probably both be legitimately Jets five and six defensemen at this point. Yeah, I feel like the Jets are really kind of log jammed on the left side where they want to be able to play these guys and kind of give them the opportunity that they kind of like earned. Like, I feel like I find Nola has been really good in the AHL and then on any other team, he might have gotten more time to kind of prove himself and be able to make an impact this year and maybe in prove to get a spot next year but it's just like when you have jmo and you have dylan on that left side and then you have basically sandberg Hainola, and stanley all kind of there for what is like basically one spot it's just you can't really give time to all three of them and kind of it's just hard to be equal with all of them into their development and i feel like stanley's just the one that kind of got the short end of the stick based on that that and his injuries this year too yeah. so uh, just super unfortunate for him. And yeah, I, I agree that one of those three guys needs to be traded and it's it's probably going to be Stanley. You're going to get way more for Stanley than you will Hainala. Just the size difference simply. Um, but that also brings me to the Jets have been allegedly kicking around Ivan Provorov, which is why do the Jets need another left shot defenseman? Yes, it would be great to have another gritty guy, but I don't know if that guy's necessarily the answer. Like the analytics say, probably don't bring this guy in. And I mean, then we have to deal with another gay pride night and on April 5th, if he's here, it's just like, that just sounds like a bad time for everyone. So, yeah, I feel like with that type of move, it's just not really kind of making your team better. Like it's kind of a short term gain, but for the assets, you probably have to give up for him. I'd much rather go for a Mackenzie Weger and even on Philadelphia, I would still go for uh, Travis Sanheim instead based on him also being from Manitoba. Um, I just feel like Provorov is just in a weird case where you know that he's better than what he is right now, but with all the issues off the ice and kind of being able to just afford him with a $6.75 million cap hit, it's just, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And I just don't feel like if you, if you go for Provorov, I feel like that's just admitting that you failed on Chitrin because Chitrin is basically in the same situation as Provorov, but it's cheaper, better this, better, and just can also play the offside. So it's like, why go for Provorov when you could have just gone for Chitrin? Right. And especially at that cheap, cheap price. You can't say no to that. Uh, So, yeah, Yeah. that's fairly unfortunate. Uh, Is there anyone else that you're hoping that the Jets kick the tires on, or has everyone been gobbled up so uh, at this point? Um, I'd say like a lot of the like kind of like middle six guys on Calgary, I'd say I'm interested in like Mangiapani to Foley, uh, Dubé, like those type of guys I feel like would be pretty impactful, but it also depends on Calgary's selling. 
And I also like Athanasiu from Chicago, if we can't get Domi, with providing a lot of speed and kind of grindy games. Oh, and uh, then sorry. on defense. Oh, I heard um, JVR yeah. uh, from Philly as well. Like, and I guess like uh, Vegas was pretty close in on him and, as well as Winnipeg this morning. So th- is he a good fit for the Jets? Like, ta- like he, I-, I thought he was like a third liner, but you're saying he's more of a second liner with this team? Yeah, I'd say like I'd put him right on the second line, uh, left wing probably. And then you could like, I feel like he's a kind of, a guy that you can flip with Perfetti based on who's performing good and who's performing bad and kind mm-hmm. of flip between them. I feel like he's just like basically what Nino Niederreiter is in a sense where he's just kind of like a net front presence guy can score goals and stuff like that. And it's just, I feel like the Jets just need to find ways to score like more because even though we had a five goal game with LA, I feel like over the past month in February, we've seen that goals can be hard to come by when you're kind of in a rut. So I feel like you're never going to complain about acquiring another goal scorer. Yeah. So just another guy that can get greasy goals. Yeah. Okay. That'd be fantastic. And, and then like when, if, and when Perfetti comes back, if he comes back by the end of the season, uh, would you have him playing on your third line left wing and then Baron on the fourth line or. Yeah, probably. Okay. Excellent. And then uh, Mason Appleton out again, upper body injury. Gagne yeah. is a good filler for him on the fourth line. Like I've liked what Gagne's done in the last four games. Yeah, it's just really unfortunate with uh, Perfetti and Appleton like being injured multiple times in the year and both landing on IR. It's just they can't really get into kind of a rhythm and they and when they're like constantly getting pushed into the lineup and it's like the team kind of needs to adjust for them being back and then gone again and then coming back. It's just when you have going in and out with injuries, it's just hard to kind of keep the rhythm going with different line mates constantly changing. So I feel like the most important thing for the Jets is just to find a lineup that works and kind of stick with that. Okay, awesome. Yeah, it would be nice to have that lineup stay healthy. Um, That's pretty much all I've got today for the Situation Room. You got anything else today? Um. You also said about grading the off season oh. based on what the Jets do, and then if they don't make moves as well. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, let's talk about that. Um, like, what would you like if Chevel Dayoff does nothing else between now and tomorrow? What do you grade this uh, this trade deadline? Um, I'd have to say probably like a good like C C plus. Like it isn't great, but it isn't like terrible. Like he he went out and got something. Like, he didn't just stand pat and go for someone, like, really depth-wise. He got someone that's an impact guy in the middle six, and I feel like you can't really complain with that. But if you're talking about what he could have done, I feel like the rating could be a lot lower. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say. As like, I think I'd almost give this a D- minus if he does nothing else because, you know, you look at what – even what Vegas did, they got Jonathan Quick. Like, that's a – even though he's had a terrible year, uh, he's – also Jonathan Quick, who's won two yeah. Stanley Cups and a Conn Smythe. So, you know, he might come in handy. Uh, and you look at what the East has done, like Boston. Holy, we thought that team was good a day ago. Nope, gets even better, even though they're, they've got Taylor Hall out. But, man, Boston's yeah. a tank. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, but, like, you, you look at what Cheval Dayoff de- did, and it's like, ooh, we moved a second, and – Nino Niederreiter, don't get me wrong. I love what he did against the uh, the ga- the Kings the other night. But, man, yeah. you got to get out there. You got to make some moves. You got to, you know, you got to be big dick swinging pretty much, you know, from here on out. And he hasn't done that yet. And Yeah. And I think that, like, the guys that he wants, it's just hard to kind of find the players like that, like, would fit well with the team and then also be like a good long-term fit because sure you can bring in someone that helps your team now, but then it could also compromise your entire future of bringing back Kelly and Shifley and Wheeler. So if you bring in someone for that long of a term, I feel like he needs to really consider more than just this year compared to other teams where they can be like, Oh yeah, we can trade like a first round pick for, for Tyler Bertuzzi because yeah, we're going for it and our team is going to kind of we're gonna we're gonna face these problems regardless. 
Yeah. Yeah. I know it is frustrating. Like here in Winnipeg, I mean, it's cold today. It's been kind of just shitty weather and I don't blame guys for not wanting to be here, but man, we got to change this narrative or they need to get rid of no, like trade no protection. movement clauses or trade. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, Cause it is frustrating for guys here in Winnipeg. I assume Minnesota and Edmonton, Calgary, even where it's just like, it's cold. People don't want to be here. It's a small market, blah, blah, blah. Ugh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like the teams that are in the Canadian market are kind of like at a disadvantage mm-hmm. always where they might have to pay more to get someone to stay here. They might need to kind of, I feel like a lot of these Canadian teams and kind of smaller markets need to kind of, they all have the same mentality of draft and develop. And then they have to kind of be more creative than other teams to to like fit the cap or to get players to want to come here. So like, as you we've seen with, uh, with Nate Schmidt, with uh, him blocking the trade initially to the jets and then Paul Stastny, uh, like talking to Nate Schmidt and being like, Hey, it's like pretty good here. It's a hockey city. You should want to come here. And then we saw him come. So I feel like just having these trade protections is just basically limiting what the jets are able to do and just mm-hmm. creates a, like just an impossible job for Chevy to meet the expectations of what other teams are able to do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's, you know, we all know he's got the hardest job in the, in the NHL and there's a multitude of reasons. And I really hope that the perception of Winnipeg changes. I've been yeah. here for, well, I've been in Manitoba for six years and I've loved it. It's a beautiful place. It's cold. It's bitter, but man, the people are just kind. So Listen, everyone here in Winnipeg, we got to start spreading propaganda to tell everyone how great this place is because I'm tired of NHL stars thinking that this place is a joke. Yeah, I think the one issue is there's also, like, just, like, with Winnipeg, it's, like, a city that many might not want to come to, but I feel like there's also other reasons why they don't want to come here based on the direction of the team because you don't really know where the team is going, and it's just kind of hard to gauge what they're going to be. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it's the same thing in Minnesota. It's been the same thing in Minnesota. Like these two teams go hand in hand where it's, um, you know, Oh, well, you know, we made the playoffs. We did really well in the regular season. Didn't quite win the division or the conference, but you know, did good enough and then miss the playoffs for two years. Then you make the playoffs for three years. It's never, you know, it's never been that all in. And that ultimately goes back to Shevel Dayoff gets a D minus because this isn't good enough and we know you can do better. Yeah, I feel like Chevy is definitely in a spot where like, like I feel like he's always like he's had situations with Chitrin and Timo Meyer, for example, where he wants to go in for these players. But then he also has to think about the like the long term impact. And I feel like the way that he has to approach the way he acquires players also is kind of a negative because it shows the team that he's not willing to kind of overspend for these assets to be like, Hey, we're going for it this year. So I feel like the team is like, why should we stay if we're not kind of, if the GM is not really trying to support us in the best way possible and kind of just more standing pat with what he has. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree with that. It's yeah. It sucks. It's hard. I'm sure something will come up. Let's check our phones before we hit uh, end on this podcast because maybe something came up and, you know, that'd be a fantastic way to end this podcast. But I don't see anything. Do you see anything? Uh, I see Buke's dad to Edmonton, but that's about it. Really? Dang it. I wanted him. Third round pick. For a third round pick? Yep. All right. Well, that's disappointing. (laughs) Ray, I'll talk to you on Sunday. Everyone else have a great uh, week. Actually, before we close out, where can we find you on the internet, Ray? Uh, You can find me at Ray.how or Brad Lambert is him. Either or doesn't really matter to me. And yeah, just excited to see what the Jets can do this deadline and hope that it can be a positive one. Excellent. I'm Angus Hout. Make sure to check out JetsNation.ca. And be sure to check out Betway to check out the latest Jets game day odds and bet on the NHL. Uh, Yeah, go visit JetsNation.ca. Give us a like and a subscribe. And we'll talk to you again on Situation Room next Thursday. And we'll do Jets Nation Radio Sunday. Peace.